Hello again, and welcome to Pathologic Classic HD. We are now going to continue on day three. At the end of day two, we spoke to Alexander Sabarov, the town mayor. We effectively gave him emergency powers. We initiated a quarantine, and then failed to escape it. Today, we'll have a few other tasks on hand. So, without further ado, let's begin. It's still very early in the morning, but as you may recall from one of our previous episodes, that does not mean that the streets are deserted. Indeed, it's more dangerous at night. That's why it's always a good idea to keep your loaded pistol at hand. So, it is still quite early in the morning. Oh shit! Ah, a lockpick. Might come in handy. It is very hard to dodge these people. So, I am somewhat cheating in the sense of that I do know where some of the side quests are available. And one of them, before I technically should have really been able to know it, and one of them is with Capella here. Her painting... The children no longer remember me. Her painting is of the step, slowly being industrialized. Yes? Would you like me to reveal the secret of a miraculous remedy of the sand plague? It's dangerous, mind you. I'm all big as Victoria. Have you ever seen antique boxes with chalky or bluish powder inside? It's already fossilized in some of them. Have you already heard of the powders, dubbed schmowders sometimes? Tell me, am I eager to hear the story from someone as honest and reasonable as you appear to be? Powders are secret remedies that some people have been keeping since the first outbreak. Before it all started, one boy, his name is Crowfoot, he died later, inspired the children to play Epidemic. They were making these powders. Wait a minute, are you saying they used to play Epidemic even before the first outbreak? Indeed. Oh, never thought about it like that. What a strange coincidence. Still, that's not important. We won't be able to learn anything from them anyway. The inventors of the game are now in heavens. That's not what I wanted to speak to you about. Then speak, Victoria. I am listening. Some children stole various drugs for their game. They chose the prettiest ones, of course. Then they crushed the pills in the mortar, mixed them and wrapped them in mixtures into the fresh leaves of fragrant step swervery for safekeeping. Are you implying this, uh, mishmash can help the stand plague? Not always. Every child has a personal secret recipe. No one knows which particular drugs were used. Each mixture was different. The most efficient ones were made by Beaker, Flanky, and Catchfly. Crow's Foot's powders were also respected, but that's because they were the prettiest. Where are these powders now? All over the place. Some are stored in caches in the houses where the children used to play infirmary. The pads were lethally dangerous, you see. If anyone was to take that much drug, it would damage their health horribly. But the children begged to differ, like they always do. They help once, so what if they do so again? That's the line of reasoning. And what do you think? Some of them undoubtedly help. They poison the body, true, but they also poison the sand dirt out. I have no idea how it works. Perhaps there are antibiotics in the mixture. Others are lethal indeed. Every single one of them is extremely detrimental to your health. Well, I have no doubts about that. The thing is, the kids were recently reminded of one of the caches. They've pli they prized it open, and now they cannot wait to test the acquired powders in an infected district. Loafer, Beaker's younger brother, has already gone to do the testing, the fool. Where, exactly? To the Silent House, I believe. That is where the infection began to spread from in the first place. And besides, it's connected to the terrible man-eater story. Children are always attracted to horror stories. All in all, I think you can stop them. If you ban the game, they'll listen to you. 
you are a celebrity doctor after all. So they have a whole cache of these powders stocked there, huh? Probably have only taken a few, but they know the places. So they will continue getting worse, and it's getting poisoned again and again. It's a lottery. No one can remember which powder is which and what the recipe was. It's a be cured or die situation. Well, all right. We'll drag out a loafer out of this and perhaps find a use for all the powders too. So, onwards. Our first quest of the day. Off to battle went the boy. It's reasonable to assume he will be found somewhere close to the silent house. This was the silent house here. However, I believe the boy is not actually there. He is somewhere nearby. Somewhere within this general district, which is called the Tanners. This will represent the first infected area of the game. I'm not eager to jump in too quickly. Not if I can avoid it. Always good to watch your six. There are drunks about, I might try and get some more bandages. After all, I was nearly running out before. Uh, as you can see, this fence here will stop me from taking a shortcut down to the bridge. I have to go through the town. Which, unfortunately, is where the bad guys might be. sad looking folk here that walk around. If you talk to them you can give them money. Oh shoot. Bandit. handy to make sure that you get rid of the bandits as quick as you can. But there'll always be more. And in truth, can we really say are they actually bandits or are they merely people driven out of desperation, poverty, into having to take to the streets at night, steal money? Ah, good. Get some more bandages. I'm in dire need of them. I think that's a bandit down there. So I'm going to change my weaponry. Approach with caution. Nope, it was a bandit and he spotted me. I'm kind of glad that he did that. I can preempt him. So I'll be quick saving a lot in the next little bit.
especially when we get closer and closer into the infected district, as we now are. This is where things start to get interesting. The sky darkens, the infection draws near. I think we should make a big hard save before we jump in too rashly and quickly. Whoa, shoot! As you can see, infection lingers. The infected areas are strictly off the limits. Keep out. We've been granted emergency powers. You must be informed by the governor. I am Bachelor Dankovsky. Oh, yes, sir, we were, sir. I apologize. Better safe than sorry. Come through, but keep in mind, sir, they're all crazed, mad, and insane. They're possessed. If they attack you, go ahead, run it everywhere. Or run anywhere, but don't kill them. We'll have to intervene and beat you within an inch of your life. For they are innocent people and in pain. So they are going to attack me, but not you. How in the world does that work? Well, you is Doc. As I see this glitchy translation hasn't been translated properly yet. You're a doctor. We patrolmen have nothing to offer but a good blow to the head, and we wouldn't let them out. They tried to escape, there's no dying night, and they did. But we taught them a lesson, though. And we're protected, though, too, thanks to you. What the patrolman is, should really be saying in this one is that you are a doctor, they think you have a cure. We're just patrolmen, we don't have anything of use to them, except a good sharp blow on the head. Protected? Yes sir, they've distributed them pills among us, told us twas on your orders. Told us they're very much a good remedy to invigorate the body, but bad for the heart. Also they make it so that your blood doesn't curdle no more, but rather fills them veins, making them bursty and a bit shabby. Am I saying it right? You seem to be describing cardiovascular diseases, in which case you are vaguely correct, yes. However, he's not necessarily entirely correct. The shops, however, do remain uninfected, at least for the moment. I might purchase a little bit more in the way tourniquets just because I've used some already as well they're still not a very good price at the moment but something's better than nothing oh having said that something being better than nothing I do believe that these tradesmen or these guardsmen might be able to offer me something try and barter with them. He might be able to give me some... Uh, but the patrolmen offer you sometimes food in exchange for trinkets from defeated bandits. It's not always very useful, though. Oh, shit. Oh, God. I need to be so careful here. Right. I have a feeling I know where the kid is. He's around here somewhere. Searching for him isn't something I really want to be doing. The uh, little visor that I'm putting up there is a power special to Dankowski. He carries a uh, bit of a plague detector on him. It's not always very useful, but sometimes it can provide you with a bit of... Ah, nice. Yes, I would like some of that. Plague rat, plague rat, plague rat, plague rat, plague rat, plague rat. I don't trust the plague rats whatsoever. Oof. They are not good to run into, especially on a dark night. They're very hard to hit, because they're rats. And if they do manage to get you, they kind of infect you. And being infected in this game is... As you may have gathered, a little bit of a disaster. I think the kid is around in here somewhere. not 
100% certain where. safe and see if we can perhaps do something else entertaining. Which is loot some houses. Oh. Or or maybe not. The plague does chase you when you go in. There is a way out and around it. It's essentially you have to dodge it. I hope that it didn't start downstairs. It starts downstairs you're a little bit fucked. Often inside the houses are useful things, food, medicine and the like, but it is always a risk, as with everything. So, now to find this child. Where has he gone? No big plague clouds in the area, which is a good thing. He's clearly not around here. Must be nearby, though. I think he's somewhere near or between Spitchka's house or Sticky's house and the Silent House, which we visited earlier. I'm gonna pause the recording for a second until I find out where he probably is. Hello and welcome back. Found the little bastard. Ouch. Loafer? Uh-huh, that's me. How do you know me? Victoria told me. Capella knows I'm here? Ah, oh, Look, could you tell her I didn't go anywhere and you just randomly bumped into me here, huh? Or better still, not here but there, uh, over by the river. I will if you leave at once and give me that powder. I've been told that this is the place where this, you know, sort of tongue comes out of the ground. Tongue made of dirty lumps. Like, made of thick air. You're sanding at that exact spot, sir. You nitwit. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Oh, actually, you seem to be right. I do have a fever. Let me take the schmowder, will you? Run back to your crowd and tell them that I banned the tests and schmowders are deadly rather than curative. I testify that you stood your ground until the very end. Alright. I suppose I'm in no position to argue. But will you confirm what really happened here? Right? If anyone asks? Just give me the box already, will you? I don't like the prospect of you poisoning yourself. Ah! The little bastard. Ah. Now you can see what happens when you get infected. I'm gonna make another quick hard save. So I can show you the effects of being infected. It's truly awful. But that means that I can wander the uh, interior without too much fear of becoming infected. So I already am. Mm. And you probably shouldn't be looting the houses of dead men. Pleasant stuff to undergo. Oh. God. It's making me slightly delirious, and I don't like it. I need a flashlight. I can't see what's going on in here. Bedside cabinet. Nothing in it. This cabinet also has nothing in it. Ah, uh, My infection is increasing. Every time I get hit by one of these plague clouds. Which I really am not enjoying the prospect of. However.
It's okay. Gonna loot some more houses. And be a generally terrible person. <sighs> Nothing. Got to be something at least useful in some way. I'm already infected. Makes no difference, right? Oh god. The visual effects are really disturbing. Oh Christ. I can't stay at full infection for too long. It will it will start to kill me. However, I'm gonna utilize this whilst I have the chance. Steal everything that I can. It's not as if everyone here is gonna be using it anyway, they're already dead. So, through the houses one by one I go. God, you might not necessarily like me for what I'm doing, but uh, at this point, if I'm already infected, I don't really care too much. I want to survive. And if I have to loot the houses of the damned and the dead already to do that, do my do what I can. Oh. However, it is very disorientating, as you may have gathered, but ultimately worth it. Ah, oh no, I need to drop something. I'll perhaps drop this bone necklace. Take these four books instead. I'm no longer immune. All my immunity has been stripped from me. By repeated encounterings of the, of the plague. And there's a woman there crying on the floor. I have very little that I can offer her but I can ease the pain. But I can't also afford to waste anything yet. I'm cruel. And I feel a little guilty for it. Because surely I should be trying to save everyone, right? Well, sometimes you don't get to save everyone. And. Once you realize that, then you start becoming more callous. You know, I certainly have. In reality, as well as in game. Ah. Sometimes we get a good haul for this, though. Seeping, seeping into your bones. It's thoroughly unpleasant. Oh, no. And then I turned and walked away. Some hero I turned out to be, huh? Oh! Fuck. Okay. This is the reason why you can't stay infected for too long. Because you do start to lose your health quite rapidly. Oh. I'm not sure how much longer I can get away with this. So I'm going to keep saving. 
hope that I don't get caught too often. Oh no. Flower for the dead. I believe that my health is constantly draining at a relatively slow rate. Rather than coming off in waves. But I know that my health is going to be reduced very low from the children's powder, regardless. Knowing what it does. So... I'm content for a little while, in a metagame kind of way, to allow myself to remain infected. But ideally, I don't want to continue on this for too long. If you look closely, you can see the shapes of faces of the damned. <sighs> yeah, that health is definitely draining. I don't have too much longer in which I can really do this. Not feasibly at any rate. I think this will have to be the last house I ransack. Doing nothing for its people along the way. Really, my altruism knows no bounds. There are ways of dodging the storm clouds and the play clouds if you if you dance about enough, you can dodge them. Ah, uh, sorry, my game just briefly froze on me. But I'm back. So yes, there are... Right, I think I need to stop and exit. I've had a fairly good haul of general items and stuff. I'm going to quick save and see if I can get one last haul. Oh! Oh no. I'm not doing well. But hey, lemons, they're, they're useful, I guess. Currently, I am being a lemon-stealing whore. Uh, that was a terrible reference, so I'm not going to make that joke again. Darn lemon stealing floors. See, I got back on my wood relatively quickly. Much like Dankovsky ignores the sick and the dying. Truly, really we are men of our principles. Ugh. Down we go, down we go, down we go. Out the door, out the door. Well, we've actually come pretty far, so this is impressive. I don't know if we really have the capacity to take another. Oof. I think we just about did. I was very much cutting it close to the band. So we used that children's powder. Or 
immunity is still quite low. But we are now effectively cured of the plague. So, so long as we don't literally walk into it, we should be able to leave in peace with a large amount of stuff to boot. <sighs> I feel bad though. We did just leave quite a few people to die. The same people that I'm supposedly here to help and save. Oh, that's not a good sound. Oh, dear, dear. Oh no. Plague victims. They, they want to get up close to you and touch you. Because they think that I've got something brilliant in my bag. They think I've got a cure. I, oh shit. I don't have any cures. Well, actually that's a lie, I do. I do have a cure. I have a cure right in my bag. I've got the children's powder. One of them got out. I know. I'm not sure how I'm going to get past him without him spotting me. I genuinely don't know how to get, get around this. This is going to be difficult. Um... Oof. Oh, Christ. It's not going well for Bachelor Dankowski this evening. I need a food shop, and I'm hoping to God that the prices have decreased at least a little bit. Because I can't afford to spend too much gold. I know I have a lot in stock, but I have a bad feeling I'm going to end up using a lot of it. Gold has become rapidly, utterly worthless. Okay. My hunger is still up. I'm leaving the nuts because they are still useful trade items. I can buy dried meat. That always does, does the trick. Fresh fish. Crackers. I don't think the fresh fish is really worth it. So... So, I suppose we should go back to talk to Capella about this, about what we've, uh, what we've learned today. So, I suppose we should make our merry way. It is still early in the morning, but probably about late enough that most of the thugs should left the streets. This is both good and bad. Good is means that there's less risk, but bad as it does put me at a bit of a disadvantage in terms of making a profit in a rather strange turn of events. The best way that Dankowski and indeed most of the characters make money in this game is by killing bandits and taking money off their corpses. And again, Bandit is only what I refer to them as. But really, they if you remember what Eve said at the start, this town is usually devoid of crime. These people have been pushed to theft and murder out of desperation.
Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Right, how much is he? 165. Can I just give him some lemons? I, I rarely need the lemons. I don't, I mean, you're a, you're a lemon merchant now. You sell lemons. Lemons in this game help reduce your fatigue. For some reason. But they increase your hunger. For some reason. I, I don't fully understand the logic of lemons. And again, it's called pathologic, not lemon logic. Hey. Yeah, I'm not proud of that one. Nope. This tends to be a bit of a problematic junction, but I think we're okay. Bandit? Can't quite. It might just be a drunken man. It is. Hello there, give me a bandage, please. Oh, fuck. I resent having to pay money for bandages when I can trade the vast, vast supplies of water that I have, but it does hang on me finding the people that can trade it. Pathologic does give you a lot of scarcities of various equipment for that. Hello, the Capella. It's hard for us to believe in things that found... outside of our scope. I found the boy. Is everything alright with him? He's not sick, is he? He's not. He was lucky. Find the cache as soon as possible and retrieve the poison. Thank you. You seem to be planning to test them one out yourself, or am I mistaken? I already have. Apparently, the one that I got was efficient. Next time, you will not be so lucky. We'll see. The children's powders are extremely detrimental to one's health, but they do eradicate the infection. Is this a mere coincidence, or did the children compound a cure? We'll never find out. Well, that's that one side quest down. We will see what happens later today when dawn comes. So until then, I think we should save and perhaps spend a couple of hours rest. Father has been avoiding me lately. Strange. The morning of the third day has come. Infected, 36. Died, 36. Missing, 12. Death toll, 108. Currently infected, 43. Day 3, in which the bachelor is offered to hunt the elusive enemy and evaluate the chances of necrosis. That... Uh, that sentence doesn't really make a lot of sense, but that's okay. A worrying message from Georgie Kane. Please come visit me at the Crucible at your earliest convenience. Another misfortune has befallen us, and again it concerns the person whom you have travelled so far to see. I hope the woes of our family are still of some importance to you. I'm George Kane. Morning has arrived. Let's go see George. Hunger is manageable. My health? Hmm. Less so. My immunity, however, has returned back to its normal levels. Immunity is one of the few things that does regenerate in this game. Everything else does not.
Generally speaking, no matter what you do, after a certain level of time, your immunity always returns to 50%, or the average level of immunity. Prior to that, it can be lowered by running into plague clouds, as you've seen me do multiple, multiple times. Or it can be increased via various items. The alpha tablets that we consumed are some of those items. There are other things like gamma tablets and beta tablets that also do this. And they essentially reduce the risk of you being infected if you walk into an infected district. They don't provide complete protection, but they certainly help. So, shall we go and see what George says? Or Georgi, as I think he really should be pronounced. I still haven't looked at the pronunciation. I am a terrible person. It'll probably seem like it's a long time that I've spent not looking up the pronunciation, but actually, in terms of the like the time it's taken me to play, this has only been this is only my second day of actually playing. The uh, upload times for YouTube videos will mean that a lot of these recordings will come along quite a long time after. Yes. Okay, so a lot of these recordings will come along quite a long time after I've actually been playing the game. I have no desire to give away my funds to the poor people at the moment, as I will need them myself in order to keep this town going. Says I, ever the hypocrite. What am I doing in this town? I'm trying to save it. And how am I trying to save it? By ignoring the suffering and shooting the desperate. Ironic, isn't it? And yet, I might still just be the best person to save this town. Doesn't really say a lot good about me. 22 water bottles. Bloody hell. Before we carry on, let's pay Eve a quick visit to find out where the hell she went last night. There'll be no deaths while you're with us, right? Is there something I can do for you? Right now my only desire is to light up candles, wash the soot, day off, rot myself on a bedsheet and get drunk until my mind goes blank. Will you get us a bottle of twirring? I'll do so if I find one. Do you want us to get drunk together? Of course. If Torin is actually 70% strong, it's a fact efficient preventative remedy. Drink it, either. Wow. That was a uh, terrible, terrible flirtation on the part of Dankovsky. Or he might legitimately just be saying that it's legitimately 70% alcohol. Which is terrible to drink. Genuinely terrible. As an actual doctor, please do not, do not. Uh. Although, having said that, I have myself consumed things which have been greater than 90% alcohol before. And I've lived to tell the tale. So, I guess it can't be all bad. So, uh, I get the feeling that twirling is a little bit more like absinthe. I mean, the old absinthe, not the new stuff that you can get nowadays, which isn't actually absinthe, it's merely a brand name. Polyhedron. We'll be climbing that quite soon, I believe. At the top left, every so often, little boxes appear with items in them. They're just things that I stumble across whilst walking. So, you effectively will always be gaining some small items. I have a heartache. My dear doctor, misfortune is a regular guest at our family home. A new calamity has befallen us. What is it? The house in which Reuben lived and worked has been tainted by infectious mold and fallen prey to looters. 
Our messengers searched every nook and cranny. Neither Reuben nor Simon's body are in the house. Some of the people that helped to undertake the search are paying a terrible price. They've contracted the sand pest. How would you explain the absence of the body? It appears that once the infection began to spread across the house, Master Reuben decided to remove the body. He must have taken it to some hidden location that he considered safe. However, since we still haven't heard from him, we can only infer that Reuben is dead. Let's hope that Reuben will get in touch soon. Something tells me that isn't going to happen. Were you going to ask me for help? Please, help us recover the body, Doctor. We are already much indebted to you for having identified Simon's killer. It's not your fault that the truth turned out to be so distressing to us all. I implore you to help Simon and us once more. Find my brother's body. This task is far from trivial. Where, where do I even start? Someone may have seen something. I believe you've made some useful acquaintances in the town's slums. Not to mention we have all manner of lowlife here. Could they know something? Speak to my brother, Victor. He is much better than me at knowing where the practical side of things is concerned. Well, I'll let you know what I find. The disappearance of Simon's body seems to greatly trouble the Canes. Could it be that a powerful, burly man like Reuben fell victim to some mysterious body snatcher? Maybe Victor would have some insight into where I should go in regards to my investigations. Well, let's go and have a chat to Victor then, shall we? Lad is right. Whatever happens in the termitry, it'll be ill-advised to open it now. Every hour brings us more trouble. I'm looking for your brother's body, Victor. Do you have any ideas on the subject? I do. If I were you, old Gimsky's son would be the first person I'd turn to. Young Vlad, nicknamed Karam. Reuben and he have had some business together. He knows the place where Reuben may have taken the body. Have you already asked him? I've tried, but we're in a difficult position now. On one hand, we are putting pressure on his father. On the other, we're asking him for a favor. Putting pressure? I was under the impression yesterday that we had managed to put an end to all the disputes between the ruling families. There can never be an end to disputes between our families. It's as impossible as reuniting day with night. And I feel that Big Vlad's actions have a bearing on the root of our troubles. I don't like the silence from the cemetery. Could it be that the infamous murderer is hiding? Thought it crossed my mind too. The termitary riot coincided conspicuously with Isidore's return from the step and the outbreak of the epidemic. The strangers made their way into town. Human or Shabnak, it doesn't matter. We can't establish whether their involvement in Simon's death was direct or indirect, but the involvement is clearly there. Why? It has been revealed to Maria in a dream that the cause of Simon's death is hiding at the termitary. I intend to find out why Big Vlad refuses so adamantly to open it. You should ask Vlad the Younger if you get the chance. Perhaps I won't even need to. So, onwards to visit younger Vlad then. I do apologize. I was briefly caught up by a software error on my recording system just then. However, I think everything has turned out still okay. Onwards to see younger Vlad. What time is it? Already gone 9 a.m. Being ever conscious of the time, I march continually forward. Hopefully we'll be able to find something of value. Even if it does mean constant dumpster diving. over there. Oh, actually, he's a teenager, isn't he? Looks like one of the gang members. I'll see if I can maybe take some trading with him. Is everything all right with you, you little rapscallion? Jesus fucking Christ. The neighbor of ours has been killed by a patrolman. I still can't wrap my head around it. That means they can make away with me just as easily. And you too. What do they kill him for? 
Well, they say he attacked someone too. He did have quite a temper, but they beat him to death with their mega fists. Mega fists. Just gonna leave that there. By the way, was there really an order to do that? For real? How do we fight now? How do we defend our honor? The order was issued to put a stop to the chaos. <laughs> right, good luck with that. You keep in mind that we can stand up for ourselves just fine. If anyone hurts me, my diner, or my friends, or Capella, they'll be in big trouble. My fists are in the right place too, you know? Got it? Why are you shouting at me? Do I, do I look like a patrolman? Fuck off, kid. Or at least trade with me. Oh, alpha tablets, fuck off. Ugh. Nothing useful. Hopefully today I might be able to find something else useful to me. I currently have within my inventory one box of children's powder. That is probably one of the most useful things in this game now. An ability to cure the plague. A plague that is otherwise impossible to get rid of. Well, it does come at a cost to health, but it's certainly better than nothing. If I can get my hands on more of the powders, we might be able to save this town. Hello, Vlad. Who lives without folly is not so wise as he thinks. How can I help you? Reuben's disappeared. His home has been infected and looted. Neither his body nor Simon's was there. Where could he have gone? I don't know. I haven't seen him. Do you suspect that Reuben is dead? I do. Well, if neither Reuben nor Simon were in the dead house, that means Reuben has at least attempted to move the keeper's body to another place. Otherwise, we'd have to surmise that someone has stolen two infected bodies with peculiarly obscure properties. Wouldn't you agree? You're reading my mind. I find it hard to believe that the body's been stolen. No madman could ransom it to the canes and get away alive, and you could never find the kind of blasphemer who would defile it out of sheer malice. Reuben will make himself known soon, you'll see. And still I beg for your assistance. There is no doubt in my mind that you have a theory of your own. Look, Reuben's dealings with our family are our family's business. We value his trust. I don't feel like disclosing the details to you would be the right thing to do. Not unless I see that... Hmm, the family would benefit more than it would suffer from that exchange. Do you understand? In all honesty, I don't. I want to settle the dispute between us and the Canes concerning our unwillingness to let the emissaries into the termitary. I don't know what the Canes are thinking, but we are not harboring anything or anyone there that could be even remote interest to them, especially to my deeply esteemed fellow Victor. So why don't you let the inspectors in? First of all, it's dangerous. The rabble is rioting. I've told you about that more than once already. Secondly, Father will not submit to the younger Kane's orders. If this keeps up, we'll soon be taking orders from his ten-year-old son. Fine, and what's your plan? The Kanes are hiding something too. They have their own skeleton in the closet, and it's even more unsightly than ours. Our closet is full of our own workers. Theirs is full of other people's children. If you can make sure that everything is well inside the polyhedron, then trust me. The termitary will be fine too. It's an enclave. It is a closed chamber. So you believe that the quarantine will be effective in keeping the infection out of that giant bunkhouse? Certainly. Did you not say yourself? At least that's how it was relayed to me. The walls are a solid defense. Besides, think of what will happen if 10,000 people pour into the streets in search of food and gossip. Try to imagine the picture. Mm, sounds convincing. I'll inspect the polyhedron and talk to Victor, but I'll ask a favor of you in return. Help me find Simon's body. Try to curb the righteous anger of the judge and the terrible Victor. They seem to have finally decided to harass my father to death. I have no doubt that no matter what he did, it's not his fault. If you do that, I will gladly assist you. Deal. If you listen closely, you may be able to hear Russian chanting. Probably can't, though. If you go too close to this well, you start hearing voices from down below in the depths, in the very bowels of the earth. So. Onwards to speak to the canes, then it would seem. Back 
back over the bridge we go. See if this child has anything to sell. Buckshot, not useful to me. I don't believe I have ever actually acquired a shotgun when playing as Dankovsky. They are very useful items to have, but just never really turned up. Sleeping draft, no. I'm not really certain that this is useful to me. How much is this worth? Two. Hmm. Go on then. So, if I take a draft of Meridorn before sleeping, that is a manner of regenerating health. Which is something that I might need to do at some point. Glad is right. Whatever happens in the termitry, it'll be ill advised to open it now. Every hour brings us more trouble. I come bearing news from the old Gimskis. Is it to do with the termitary? Most curious. What is it? Vlad the Younger asked me to tell you the following. The termitary had been closed before the polyhedron was, and there are many witnesses to that. Really? What is he getting at? He has no reason to believe the situation inside the termitary is any different from that inside the tower. Ingenious. Damn it. All right, so be it. If that's how he's spinning it, then I'm forced to leave him alone. For now. You can tell him that. It'll only last until we find proof that uh, not everything is in order in the cemetery. Hope there's no doubt in your mind that I'm obviously doing all of this to get the old Gimskis to reveal the location of Simon's body to me. Or perhaps you might order your son to open up the polyhedron so that old Gimkis agents could expect it. That would give us the right to inspect the cemetery. My son has long since ceased obeying me. He regards me as an enemy. Only Nina had an influence on him. His beloved sister was someone he might have trusted, but now even Maria can't make him over the polyhedron. I wouldn't take the risk either. Let the children remain fortified. I'd like to make sure that your confidence is not groundless. My son has now founded a kingdom of his own. There is, towering above our sinful earth. He wouldn't let anyone into that world, not even his own father. If you're interested to know what is going on there, give it a try. Maria thinks you're a man for whom nothing is impossible. Well, yes? Well, I'll follow your advice. So, the upshot from that conversation is I need to now investigate the polyhedron. If I can ensure the polyhedron is clear of infection, then that means that the termitary is likely also clear of infection. But, I don't think we can be certain. So, so begins our long climb up this great structure. A tower made from the blueprints of its own architecture. At last we climb. If 
funny old standing stones of the step are interesting things, aren't they? It's as if they were placed there. Which, of course, they were. By the step people long, long ago. This, this, however, this is not something that the step people made. This is something definitely more industrial in origin. The product of the mad genius of two insane and brilliant architects. A structure that has no way it should stand upon its own, and yet it does. A structure that is built from itself, out of its own idea, literally constructed from a blueprint. structure which has supposedly legendary properties, and is now apparently home to a whole bunch of children. You can't go inside or else the tower will topple. I'm a friend of a cane's. Come see Khan. Khan is the name of Victor's son. Or at least that's what he calls himself. You're in luck then. Khan has left the facets to mourn his grandfather. Come in, but don't try to get inside. You really don't want us all to perish, do you? I really don't. Inside the polyhedron we are. Strange place, isn't it? The worst lies ahead. Adults are not allowed in here. It can topple the tower. Well, common sense now suggests otherwise. The tower does not abide by the laws of common sense. We've got different laws in here. Perhaps we ought to get acquainted. My name is Caspar. I'm the son to Victor and Nina, the youngest of the Canes. Now you name yourself. I am Bachelor Dankovsky. Are you a friend of my family? I am. The worst lies ahead. You wanted to speak to me? I am listening. I need to examine this structure. No, guest, that's impossible. We don't trust grown-ups. We can't allow the corruption to get inside. That's why we risk our lives guarding this place. Perhaps the pains we're taking will be convincing enough proof of you. What are you guarding this tower from? You? Your doppelgangers? Everyone who comes from across the river? I don't have any doppelgangers. You do? Two of them. Also endeavouring to save humanity? At least that's what they say. Every word they utter mirrors yours. And so far, they've caused nothing but harm. What kind of harm? Our salvation lies in repose and silence. Our town must stay still now. Freeze like someone who stirred up a nest of venomous snakes. Then disease will abate and will burn up in its own flames. I have told these were your words, were they? Close enough. But what do my, um, doppelgangers have to do with anything? They make people uneasy. It's because of them that no one stays put. Disturbed by the Harrispex's actions and the changeling's balmy preaching, people start fussing and end up laying their lives upon the altar of the common good. We children will not listen to you. Why? What did I do to lose the trust of the children? I'm protecting our world. We were doing just fine without you. We can handle this plague even if it spells the end of the world. Do you want to check this place is clean? Have a look around. It is clean, I promise you. But I won't let you in, wise bachelor. No offence. Are you sure? You may mean well, but you bring evil and destruction all the same. This town is too fragile for your thudding steps. Your heavy hand will crush us all, even if you were only grabbing us in order to pull us out of the abyss. Go in peace. Everything is all right here. Will you promise to let me know if anyone becomes sick? I promise. I'll be ha happy to talk to you any time here at the ag Agate Pit. Sorry. And if something terrible happens inside, I'll be the first to shout for your help. I'll mention what you said to Vixen next time I talk to him. So whilst this is the inside of the polyhedron in a manner of speaking, this isn't the true inside of the polyhedron. This tower is Mom's gift. It's now been overtaken by the Doghead Gang. But it's something beyond understanding. Once more, whilst the outside was constructed from its own blueprints, the inside is constructed from its people's own dreams. Or at least that's what the children seem to think.
So we begin the slow descent. Having truly learned nothing of this magnificent structure. And yet... You can see along the side of it, all the writing, all the scribbling and scrolling is composed entirely of its own ideas. Both in the literal and the figurative sense. I believe that it does represent something greater, though. It represents dreams and human ambition, achievement. In many ways, it also represents humanity's triumph over nature, which can be seen as a good or a bad thing, depending on how you view it. Jankowski might well see that as a good thing, though. After all, his entire life's work is to triumph over death. And what in nature is more certain than death? strong here. How much ammunition do I have? 11 bullets. Less than that. 9 bullets, plus the 6 in my rat pistol. It's a decent amount, but it's perhaps not enough. So pale. I'm dying for a gulp of milk, but they won't let us milk the cows. Do you by any chance have some? Who doesn't let you milk cows? Well, people say the cows have been oozing some ichor instead of milk lately. Auntie said she knows this for sure, and Mum nodded and added that Iger, the cook, agrees. She's a stepwoman and all, and she knows everything about cows. Iger even went as far to say as the milk turned completely black. She's right, it doesn't sound like you should drink such milk. I'll check on your cows or assign these tasks to someone. Interesting flavour tax, isn't it? Don't want a lockpick. Not really going to be useful to me. Not at the moment, at any rate. Although perhaps I should consider it soon. Going into houses is perhaps one of the more callous things that you can do. Breaking into someone else's house, someone who isn't even infected, stealing what food supplies they have when food is already becoming so scarce. But it's either that or paying exorbitant prices for it, and I'm not fully convinced what the right thing to do is in this case. really claim moral superiority when we're doing terrible things to others and yet we are only doing it out of a sense of survival I'd argue that we are not profiteering from the from the death but we are certainly harming others in our efforts to try to survive. Is the disease really contagious? I managed to settle the matter. Victor will no longer insist on expecting the termitary. I'll keep my word. Honouring the venerable Simon's remains is our mutual goal. We are bound by the same grief. There's a ripper, perhaps even more than one, on loose in the knots. I think they're runaway butchers. Runaway butchers. Or those few who are unlucky enough to find themselves outside when the termitary is blocked off. Now they're hiding in town. I believe they're trying to stealing... Well, I believe they're stealing the dead to use their bodies for divination. They have their own future-telling techniques. Where would they be hiding? 
be honest, I'm not sure myself. One curious young man managed to trace their path. It seems that they've been carrying the dead to the Spleen District. I'll mark the house on your map. Thank you. Hmm. This is a new, interesting addition to the quest. Well, perhaps if we find out what's going on in regards to these rippers, or butchers, then we might find out a bit more about the town. For clarification, the butchers are literally the butchers of the town. They are the workers that work inside the termitary and the apiary, and they produce all the town's meat. What's perhaps less obvious is that the butchers are the town's native inhabitants. They lived on this land long before the more European settlers came through. They have an entirely different culture, and they are entirely different people. They speak their own different language. But the people of the steppe, they are now an interesting mix instead. There is now the more Europeanized Russians that we are mainly interacting with. And then there are people who are mixed. Including the Harris Max, Artemy Burak, and most of his kindred. So, we now have to go on a mission to find these butchers, or these rippers. Which is probably a bit of an offensive term for them, but still. And we'll have to figure out where they are and what they are doing. And if any of them have the body of Isidore or Simon. Anyway, I shall pause this episode here. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.